Hi, I'm Genevieve Day, and this is Uncommon. Amazing. And finally felt like I had a break, which was quite yeah, interesting. Yeah, I'm really craving that. I haven't really taken time off in like two and a half, three years. Yeah. And then, you know, had a bit of staff turnover as any agency has been going through and I'm like, oh, it's okay. I'll just do their job as well while we're hiring or like <laughs> then some of the other people need to take leave. I'm like, you should take a holiday. Like you've been working really hard too. I'll just do your job while you're away. Yeah. So. It's fucked. Yeah, it's yeah. fucked. <laughs> That's, yeah, we've been guilty of that. So the business as it stands today, I think the I was, I was like, fuck, she's so smart. When you launch Next of Kin, I was like, <laughs> this makes so much sense. Where, now that you've got time to think about the strategy, right? Mm-hmm. You've got your core premier, uh, like, you know, people who are media personalities now. Yeah. They're, no, they're not just influencers. So that's day management. Mm-hmm. And then you have Next of Kim, which when people go and look at the website, and the link will be in the show notes. Amazing. It is, it's like, it's just basically mothers, right? Well, that's exactly what it is. It's a specialist agency. Yeah. So doing one thing and doing it well, just targeting families and mums. And do you look at that model and go, okay, I've got this, it's worked. Would you then apply that in different special? Because that's a super niche. Like That is super, super niche. Because some people would look at it and go, oh, you're focused on lifestyle or you're yeah. focused on music or gaming. Like that would be almost like us starting a separate agency for Minecraft gamers. I <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, but also – Mums are the biggest decision makers in the family. They're I'm making sorry. all the financial decisions at the supermarket. They're the ones that everyone wants to target. I think, yeah, you break up your marketing spend into families, sinks and dinks. So like single income, no kids, <laughs> double income, no kids. But yeah. it's mainly going to the families. Yeah. And so we had a lot of people coming to us wanting to sign with day management. And I was like, oh, I really love this person, but it doesn't really make sense to have them there and then have Brooke Blurden there. It didn't mm. quite align. And again, it wasn't my intention to have a hundred people on the books a day. Yeah. So I was like, oh, but I don't want to limit myself. Let's just do a whole new venture. Okay. And I remember presenting it to the team in like our team whip. And I'm like, guys, new agency, here we go. And they're like, oh, but Chen, we're so busy. And I'm like, oh, we'll hire someone new. It's fine. We'll staff it. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. It'll be fine. And I think once you've done something once, there's no fear there anymore. Like I wasn't scared. Oh, is this going to fail? It's like, no, I, know, I have all the contacts. I know the people. We know who to talk to for Huggies and Lego. Like we're all good. And it was still a lot of education when we launched it about what it is and why it exists. But it's funny. We've been doing a lot of meetings in the last couple of weeks about like new financial year budgets. And so many people are like, yeah, love your day talent, but tell me more about next of kin. Interesting. So they're really lapping it up. And I think its effectiveness is for like that less sexy campaign approach. Mm. So we can do campaigns with sorbent toilet paper and it's not diluting a message that we've spent seven years building. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, um, would you say more transactional brands or more household brands? More household brands. Yeah. Yeah. Things you'd find in a supermarket, but also kids' toys, cotton on kids, big W. Mm. It really can be anything. And we still do a lot of like hair and beauty and fashion because no one is ever just a mum. Like people don't just exist to have kids. They still have interests in sport and wellness and food and beauty. So we get to kind of touch all those markets, but through that one lens. And then when an agency gets a brief in and they're like, oh my gosh, I need to find 30 family talent, mm. they just call us. Wow. Yeah. And do you think that you will do, have you thought about doing that in different niches now? I mean, I haven't, but now you mention it, <laughs> yeah. I'm going to go away from this meeting and be like, what other niche? Yeah, because, um, yeah, I've always thought about like that and, and segmenting people. Mm. Um, I'm in agreement that I think we're at our absolute max and we never, I don't think we'll ever sign more than 30 people. That's like mm. the most that we'll ever have. And that's a lot of people. That's a lot. Yeah. Um, but also we're in a domain that is, you know, it's like when you first started out, it's a lot, it's a lot younger. Yeah. There are less household names than the talent that you have. Yeah. But there are people that are getting to that point. Like a Will Gibb is getting to that point where he's a household name. Amazing. The, you know, the, there's maybe one or two others there, but the majority still aren't at that point there. And it will probably take three, four years. Mm. 
So, um, yeah, it's always, it's always interesting. Uh, it's like, I don't know, the, the only analogy I could think of is it's like being a coach for some sort of sporting team. Oh, absolutely. Because like, you have the group relationship and then yeah. you have your individual relationship with the talent. Yeah, totally. And you're constantly managing that and you know you only have so much capacity to deal with X amount whatever that number is. It's a lot of mentoring. It's a lot of talking about things that aren't work as well. Mm. And that's all part of the relationship. And yeah. And I think what I love to see now is like one of the girls going to one of the talent's house for lunch or something. Mm. And that's their relationship. And, you know, being secure enough, knowing that like they're allowed to have that. It doesn't have to be me. I don't have to be there. But, you know, sending them along to events and sending the team out because, yeah, I can't be physically texting everyone from both agencies all the time, Mm. but they know they have that person and they know they can call me at any time if there was an issue or if they had a question or just wanted my advice, they know that they would have direct access to me as well. Yeah. So that, that was a key question I had for you is like, when you get to that point and as we were talking to Jackie before of handing more stuff over to her, as we hire more people, because I do too much. Yeah. What is... how do you see that relationship with the talent? Is it does it become more friendship based? And do you people who are busier you're spending more time with? Like how do you how do you manage it? Yeah, it's hard to get the balance right. I think I have a lot of genuine friendships with my people as well, mm. and so it naturally falls into a friendship. And I might have dinner with them and not speak about work at all, and that's not why we're there. But yeah, I think it's just trying to be as equal as you can and be mindful of that too. And even if it comes down to things like, you know, who am I commenting on Instagram page? Like I don't want to comment on one person and neglect someone else and trying to keep it even like no one has a favorite <laughs> child. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. But yeah, it's, it's tricky. And sometimes people do get more of my hours just because they have more things on that involves mm. me personally. Um, and, and other talent are often aware of it, you know, like people, for me, it's Will Gibb is like he, he's the busiest guy that we have in our roster. Yeah, and other talent are aware of it. So you know you oh, get that's those. That's so comments. tricky. It's very hard. It's very very hard. But it just is the nature of the the business, right? Yeah, I think at the same time though, like I never want people to feel like, oh, well, they get more bookings, so they deserve more than me, because yeah. that's not how I really like to operate either. Like they're all kind of equal in my view and they all started out at the same point. So who knows, you know, someone who could be lower down, less busy now could become the next hot big thing. Mm. So you want to make sure that we're giving equal attention and love and everything to everyone because yeah, they could all blow up. They could all explode into be this next huge media star. And the thing is that that has been the competitive advantage of being smaller rather than having a big roster because you can give that. Totally. So it's always a tough thing. If you were to pick a niche, though, going back to it, what would you pick oh. as as an as a new thing? Mm. It's so hard because, like, if you look at beauty, Max Connectors do it so well. Yeah, they kind of have that niche, and I think fashion is too limiting. Yeah, and it's funny with next of kin. Like, I don't have any kids, but now I know so much about swaddles and baby monitors. <laughs> And types of formula just from working in that niche. Yeah. Maybe there isn't another niche. Maybe. I've already got it all covered. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you want then for the next few years? Have you thought about that? You probably will when you finally go on break. Yeah. I mean, we're doing more in the TV space, which is very cool mm-hmm. and kind of a passion of mine. And so that's been really fun and that like natural progression more into the media space as well and not just like the social media space. So that's been fun and new and challenging and interesting. Um, So probably continuing on in that journey. But at the same time, we never want to reject our roots and the fact that we are so strong on social and digital, again, sets us apart. So we don't want to be like, oh, no, we only do TV campaigns or we only do huge ambassador deals for our talent. Like we'll always do Instagram posts and everything. But, yeah, finding that balance of the jobs that elevate and push people more into the mainstream media, that's kind of going to be the focus. Do you have a personal dream in the TV space? Because that that was a big thing for me in the last six months is getting most of our ta- like getting on board with the casting guild is mm-hmm. a big thing. So we're on their platform now. 
and then getting people cast for jobs. That's that's an interesting part. Obviously, a lot of what you would do is people coming to you for that. Yeah, and it's also kind of educating them when they come to us for one person. It's like, well, look at our roster Mm -hmm. and have you thought about this? Or I know you want this one person for this show, but actually the other person is way more suited and actually available. Like would you ever produce a show with with one of your lead talent? <laughs> oh, not really. See, I don't really have goals to go into like production like that. Mm. I'll work alongside it. I don't need to get my hands dirty in that arena. Yeah, right. Yeah. Do you look at it and go, fuck, it's just, it's a lot of work. It's so much work. Yeah. And so much, so many elements that you cannot control, which mm. I guess is our lives anyway. But yeah, I'm happy to work alongside them. And just craft the concept. Yeah. Yeah. So we were talking earlier about, I was on a phone call with someone and they are saying, oh, we're in a recession. I think everyone at the moment, like in financial markets, everyone is freaking out. Mm. There's no doubt. Yeah. But I'm not seeing it in marketing buys which, or media buys, which is honestly like where you would see it, right? Like the reality of a recession would be exhibited in less people spending money on marketing. Yeah. So where do you see the state of things at the moment? Are you busier than you've ever been? Are you at a nice pace? Do you think it will get busier later this year? It's so funny because I was doing some number crunching last night with Pat who works in finance. And he kind of helps me like do these trend reports and graphs and everything. (laughs) And over the seven years I've been in business, there's been all these different changes and circumstances and COVID and everything, but the trends are the same. Right. It always spikes Black Friday, Christmas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It always goes down a bit in January. It spikes around April. Mother's Day is huge. It goes a little bit quiet towards the end of financial year. That's been consistent. Mm. And the amounts has obviously changed as more people got on board with influence marketing. But we haven't seen any big drop-offs. And, you know, you read the headlines about this big recession and lettuce is $11 and that's crazy in the cost of living. And it probably will trickle down if people genuinely cannot afford to buy the products we're pushing. Mm. Um, I shouldn't say pushing, that we're authentically promoting. <laughs> um, but at the same time, brands still have that marketing budget. They've still got it approved. They need to spend it. They need to promote what they're doing. Mm. So I don't think it's going to go down dramatically if at all in a way. 